Time now for your COVID-19 questions. With me tonight, infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Lenore Saxinger, and respirologist, Dr. Samir Gupta. Hello to you both. Let's get right to it, because we always have tons of questions. First one, some suggest airlines are not high risk because of air circulation and filter systems. I might be flying soon. I'm wondering whether I can take steps to decrease the risk of contracting COVID-19. Dr. Gupta, let's start with you. Yeah, so it's, it's a good point. You know, people think of airlines as sort of static tubes of air, but, but they're not. In fact, they have very high air exchanges. And the reason for that is that, you know, if you're sitting next to a baby that soiled their diaper or next to somebody who's had air sickness, you can't sit around with those odors for eight hours. So they have high air exchanges. Uh, they've put in HEPA filters. They've been very good filtration systems in addition to that. And they're also now disinfecting between flights. So those are all good things. Uh, what they've taken away from us, though, is our sort of our best weapon against spread of this virus, which is that physical distance. Uh, so obviously, people need to be masked for the whole flight. Uh, they need to disinfect every surface they're going to touch, especially the tray table, uh, before you touch it, but then also after you touch it. Uh, and think about those times and those areas where there isn't that much air exchange, so like the airport lounge. And probably the highest risk is, in fact, getting on and off the plane. And that's where you should think about that physical distancing. Still so important to be alert. Uh, Dr. Saxner, this one is for you. Does your blood type put you at greater risk and severity level of COVID-19? We hear this question a lot. Yeah, there was some data early on in the pandemic that suggested that people with um, AB, AB um, blood types and possibly RH positive, so they can be positive or negative with those letters, um, might have a little bit of increased risk of severe disease. Um, that's always a bit complicated because we're not actually testing absolutely everyone and so we are testing the fraction that comes forward for testing. At the end of the day, the current data really looks like um, there might be an increased risk of acquiring disease or at least acquiring detected disease um, with type AB um, and maybe B and there might be some slight uh, reduced risk of having documented infection if you're type O. Um, however, the difference is actually quite small percentage wise. And so I don't think anyone should feel that their blood type really significantly impacts their likelihood of getting infection um, more so than the things they're choosing to do. And the other part is it doesn't seem like people are more likely to get severe disease um, with the quote higher risk blood types. And so I think it's a, a curiosity at this point. I don't think it should really change anyone's planning at all. Okay, fair enough. Dr. Gupta, are face shields as protective as face masks? Uh, that's a good one. So I like to think of them as complementary. So as healthcare workers, we actually do use both. Uh, but to be, to be fair, I've had patients who, who struggle with face masks, you know, for various reasons, claustrophobia or skin irritation. And they've asked me if face shields are a good alternative. Uh, we don't have a lot of data in this area, but just conceptually, you know, a face mask is directly up against your nose and mouth. So it's obviously going to filter many more of those droplets that are coming out. Uh, and it acts as a filter for most of the droplets that will be coming in as well. Whereas the shield is at a certain distance. So there's obviously a chance for those droplets to disperse as they come out. And the air that you're entraining around that shield will also contain other people's droplets. So it doesn't give that same protection. What it does do, though, is it protects your eyes. Uh, so that's why I consider it to be complementary, because that's something that masks don't do. Uh, so, you know, what I'm telling patients is ideally we really want you to wear these masks. If people absolutely can't wear the mask, then a face shield is certainly better than nothing. So last one to you, Dr. Saxinger. This is, uh, we don't have too much time here. If two people are both wearing a mask and sunglasses, would it be safe to share a quick hug with faces turned away? And this last line is poignant. The need for human touch can be strong. So I think that when we talk about getting... Um, closer. Uh, we have to look at this as being kind of more of a special occasion um, because routine closeness can lead to increased transmission. If you were to give someone a special occasion hug, wearing a mask, glasses, hand hygiene and brief contact with faces turned away would be the safest way to do it. So it's, it's a difficult one to call. Yeah, we're still not there yet. Doctors, thank you both once again.